Hi, everyone. Well, first of all, let me start by saying that it is a real pleasure um, to be here and an honor to be here today uh, with, with Macaldi on this very important day. Um, and I would say that especially following uh, two previous experiences that I have on the past few days, both in Turin and Milan, where I could witness uh, uh, firsthand how Italy is positioning itself to lead the clean energy transition. Um, Today's event is particularly important because we are at a critical juncture um, in Europe's industrial journey, right? Uh, the inauguration of Magaldi's innovative thermal um, energy storage pilot is a significant step in Europe's broader effort um, to drive industrial transformation uh, to our factories. But let me say that this project not only demonstrates that scalable solutions like the thermal energy storage can drive industrial transformation and help Europe meet its climate goals, but it also can support us in enhancing industrial competitiveness. That is a very much cornerstone of what we are um, dealing right now. So I wanted to start by bringing a little bit of the context of what is happening in Europe, and particularly, particularly on the discussions of the new cycle of the, of the European Commission and what are actually the priorities that we are seeing happening as well when it comes to other regions in the world. So the first thing we must know is that Europe is facing an urgent um, challenge to remain competitive at global scale, right? Um, the, the, the report that Mario Draghi recently um, unveiled on the um, competitiveness of the, um, of the future of the European Union um, pretty much state that Europe is lagging behind other economies, particularly the US and China, when it comes to key sectors like the uh, clean technologies and innovation. Uh, this decline not only threatens our industrial base, but also Euro's broader economy future, right? So to reverse this trend, Draghi is talking about an investment, an annual investment required of 800 billion. Uh, and I must say with 55% of that going to clean technologies and innovation. So just say that the scale of the challenge is immense. Um, we might close the innovation gap. We must decarbonize our key sectors. But at the same time, we need, must, we need to make sure that we reduce our dependency uh, on external suppliers, and especially in this context of rising energy costs and sustainable geopolitical conditions. So in all of these discussions, uh, what it is expected is the clean industrial plan that the um, president of the um, European Commission will be embedding within the first 100 uh, days of uh, or her mandate, will be aiming and aligned to make Europe uh, a leader in clean technology manufacturing. Um, during my recent visits to uh, Turin and, and, and Milan, it was clear that policy, uh, capital and innovation are required to unlock the full potential of clean technologies and ensure that Europe gets back on the table uh, to become a global industrial leader. Yeah, so, but before continuing, no, I wanted to um, make a step back uh, briefly and talk about what Breakthrough Energy does and, and what is our angle on all of these discussions. So uh, Breakthrough Energy is an initiative that it was started by Bill Gates at the Paris COP in 2015, where our mission is to accelerate the world's transition um, to a clean energy future by making breakthrough technologies scalable and, co and cost competitive with, our, with the fossil fuel. So basically, we work to make green as cheap as it is the brown. Um, and so that the clean technologies now can become a viable alternative to the way that we do things today that it is uh, emitting CO2. So basically, we're working to reduce that 51, and that is the uh, uh, gigatons of CO2 equivalent that we emit annually to, to zero by, 20, by 2050. And our work, let me say, that is structured around three um, key uh, capital providing platforms where uh, we look to discover, develop, and deploy technologies around what we call the five grand challenges. So it's everything that it comes to, you know, what the human being does when it moves around the transportation, when it's manufacturing and produce things in the manufacturing sector, when we live around the building sector, when we eat in the agricultural sector, and when we plug ourselves in, that is the electricity sector. So um, our through our three um, capital providing platforms that are the fellows, the ventures, and the catalysts, the three Ds that you have in the in the screen. We support from very early stage of research and development of new technologies. That is the fellows one through um, non-dilutive capital. Uh, we invest in startups and cutting edge innovations on our ventures program. And we have around 120 investments across the five, uh, grand, five grand challenges that I was mentioning. 
and of course we we enter into into the large scale demonstration projects such as the uh, uh, the pilot that uh, Magaldi is building here today, no, to help them um, reach in parity cost and and closing what we call the green premium. That is the over cost of that some of these technologies have when it comes to the to the market. However, um, we totally feel as well that innovation alone is not enough, and the greatest challenges we face in scaling these technologies that we uh, is scaling these technologies that we have to reach real world impact. So this was a key theme in my discussion with Italian stakeholders in Milan and in Turin, um, where to move from prototypes to large scale development, we need uh, not only the technology development, but as well, we need innovative financial mechanisms. We need the permitting and the regulation to be in line. So, you know, technologies like thermal energy storage batteries can go fast, but as well, overall, we need more collaboration as cross sectors, both from smaller players that are developing these technologies with corporates and the industries that are installing them, but as well between what it is the private sector and the public sector to get the support to move forward, right? So why we focus at Breakthrough Energy on thermal storage, particularly, well, basically it's, you know, it's pretty clear for us, you know, um, industrial heat in particular, um, it's two thirds of the total industry energy demand in the world. And that's a very big part of the cake, right? When it comes to the global energy use, just industrial heat is the 25% of the global of the, of the energy that we use there. And if we translate this into emissions, it's up to 20% of the global CO2 emissions. Can you hear me well? No? Yeah? <laughs> um, so Draghi's report is really pointing out to where we need to put uh, the focus right now. Um, we are moving from a phase in the last few years that we were working pretty heavily on the demand side, sorry, on the, on the supply side, on installing those renewables that we need. Now it is the time to focus on demand. Now it is the time to focus on deploying technologies like this one that can use green electrons in our economy, can support decarbonizations, can support uh, uh, the reduce on, on reliance on, on, on the gas usage, and at the same time increasing the energy security, but overall can help Europe on getting the leadership uh, that it has lost in previous sector and create the jobs that we will be um, leaning on on these technologies in the, in the coming years. So all in all, thermal energy storage uh, provides a renewable scalable solution for the carbonizing industries such as pulp and paper, such as the chemical industry, such as the food and beverage that uh, Magaldi will be focusing, I suppose, uh, very soon and, and many others, right? So um, this is a perfect example of a technology that can help reduce emissions uh, and energy costs. So let me say that by 2030, uh, technologies like uh, like this one can cover up to 9% of um, of the heat needs in industries that are requiring temperatures up to 600 degrees. And that is very important because uh, we have now a pathway forward of how to move to, to help electrifying these industries, but at the same time reducing, reducing their emissions. So moving to the, to the other, to the last, yeah. So all of these conclusions that you have here um, are pretty much from the, um, coming from the report that Leticia was, was highlighting. So we, we, we released a report in March this year where we pretty much put the focus on what will be the role of these technologies and, and, and what it will require at the regulatory level to, to help us moving forward, where Magaldi was a very great supporter and, and providing us um, 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 guidance while we were putting it out. So, but I just wanted to summarize here that, you know, these technologies cannot not only electrify and reduce emissions, but at the same time, it can support a faster deploying of renewables because by, um, by uh, electrifying the demand um, and helping on the negative prices that we are seeing now in the electricity market, they can bring the part of the, the, part of the demand that we need to move faster of that renewable integration and, re and reducing containment. But not only that, because on the grid side, they can bring as well balance and RCRA services that it's very important to as well help on the decongestion of the grid and moving faster on, again, um, 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 injecting more renewables into the, into the system. So all in all, just to finish here, um, as I both, as I see, as I saw both in Turin and, and Milin in the past few days, um, I was, we were pretty sure that Italy has the talent, the infrastructure and the entrepreneurial spirit to lead in clean tech. Um, but to truly fuel this transition, we still need to work harder on aligning the capital and the policy with the innovation. Um, and this thermal energy storage uh, project by Magali is a powerful example of the type of solutions that we need to scale across Europe. So um, let's seize this moment to turn innovation into real, real world impact 
Uh, congratulations again uh, to Magaldi uh, for the leadership in industrial uh, decarbonization. And we look very much from Breakthrough Energy to keep on working um, on our collaboration and supporting you um, um, on, on bringing um, uh, Europe the different pieces of the puzzle that it needs um, to become a global leader in clean technology. Thank you very much.